Welcome to the Roadmap to One Million podcast. I'm your host, Stacey Zeal, and if you're looking for the high-level strategies and stories behind building a seven-figure product brand, then you're in the right place. On this show, we'll uncover the advanced strategies, stories, and secrets that you need to know in order to take your e-commerce brand to the next level. Are you ready to uncover your Roadmap to One Million? Let's dive in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Roadmap to One Million podcast. My name is Stacey Zeal, and I am super excited for you to be here today. This is pod, is the podcast that is designed to help you to take what you are already doing marketing-wise to the next level so that you can build a business that allows you to live the life you desire. I'm going to give you the marketing strategies, the systems, the support, all the things that you need to scale your business. So be sure to follow the show and make sure that you share it with your biz besties so that they can get this knowledge too. So this is episode two in our Streamline and Scale series, all about long-term lucrative lead generation strategies that you must focus on when you are looking to scale your when you're looking to scale your business when you're looking to take your evergreen offers to the next level um, and if you missed last week's episode I walk you through the three long-term growth strategies to focus on when it comes to scaling your evergreen offer so if you missed episode one make sure that you definitely go back and listen to that one um, because all of these episodes build on each other and it won't, I want to make sure that you understand the foundation of the three strategies that we're going to focus on for this series. And then, you know, you jump into all, all, all the good stuff. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about the importance of lead generation in scaling your offers, your evergreen offers specifically. And then we're going to talk about the three long-term lucrative strategies that you need to prioritize to generate leads at scale for your membership, for your course, for your events, All of these things that you are, um, any offers that you have that you really need to get volume for, that you really need to have people joining every single day, that is what we're talking about in this series. Um, But before we jump in, before I jump into the actual content, I want to make sure that you know about my workshop, Maximize Your Money. It's all about how to scale your evergreen offers with Facebook and Instagram ads. So this is the workshop to check out if you want to understand exactly how to layer Facebook ads into your existing strategy so that you can take what you're doing to the next level. So if you have a course, you have a digital product, you have a membership, you have another one-to-many offer that you want to generate high quality leads for every single day, definitely go watch the workshop. The workshop is at stacyzeal.co slash max. That's S-T-A-C-Y-Z-E-A-L dot C-O slash M-A-X. And it's also going to be linked in the show notes. So if you go to the show notes on our website, go to stacyzale.co slash podcast, you can see all the show notes there, as well as the links for anything to sign up and the link to sign up for the workshop is there as well. Okay, so let's jump in. Lead generation is a fundamental part of marketing, especially in this digital first marketing world that we have been in for some time. Um, And in order for people to buy from you, I always talk about how you have to build know, like, and trust. And that's a fundamental core piece of marketing and that you have to, that people have to know who you are, they have to like you, and then they they have to trust you also before they're going to buy anything from you. And so this first piece is really talking about how to get people to know you. And I'm not coming at this from a sense of like, oh, you're not getting any leads. Let me tell you how to get leads. This, that's not what this is about. That's not what this series is about. This series is about really taking what you're doing and understanding that as you grow, as you scale, as you get bigger, what you're doing now is not going to sustain you for that next level that you're trying to get to. We always say like, you know, people always say that in order to get something different, you have to do something different. And so what I'm bringing to you in this series is not lead generation 101. It's not, oh, Stacey, how can I get leads? It's for those of you who are already getting leads into your business. You're already making sales. You're growing your business. Maybe you've already hit six figures. Or maybe you're at mid six figures. And you're trying to figure out, like, how do I take my marketing to the next level? Because it what got me to 100K, what got me to 250K is not going to take me to a million. 
And so that's what I'm talking to you about in this series. And so that's what I'm going to be focusing on when I'm talking about these are long-term lucrative lead generation strategies and that you, that when you get to a certain point in your business, which is, you know, when you're, when, as I mentioned, as you're growing, you're scaling, you're making money, you're having to hit these higher targets. So you need more leads coming in and you need them more consistently so that you can hit these high targets. This is what we're going to be talking about. These are things that can be, that are going to be bringing you um, leads 24 seven without you having to do all the things. That's also a piece of this too, because as you scale, we're also, you know, we're also talking about streamlining. And so as you get bigger, as you need these bigger numbers, you're going to have to do more marketing, but you don't have to actually exchange more of your time because I know we are all like, we're time strapped as CEOs, right? Our time is our most precious asset that we have. And marketing happens to take up a lot of time of that, especially if you're someone who has a small team like me, you know, it's myself and one other person. And so if you have a small team, maybe you only have, you know, a few people on your team, or maybe you are a solopreneur and you're like, I need to do more marketing to hit these higher targets. These are long-term lucrative, sustainable, scalable strategies that we're going to talk about today that, that will help you to take what you're doing to the next level without feeling like it's taking up all of your time. And so one thing I want to point out before I jump into the three strategies is that organic social media is not on this list. Of these three, organic social media is not on this list. And I'm going to t- I want to tell you why before we jump in. Um, social media is not designed to be long term. And we're, I'm thinking outside of YouTube, outside of Pinterest. I'm thinking about the top, the big three uh, or, you know, the big, the big ones, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, those, the, the TikTok, specific, especially, <laughs> So they're not designed for long, to be long term, meaning the, the content that you create for, create for social media is not designed to stay on that platform forever. It's not designed to be something that you can post once and then use over and over and over again. It's not really designed like that, especially if you're thinking about um, platforms like TikTok. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the differences in the algorithms when we get into this next strategy. But I wanted to, to, to set that context first is that. Social media is designed for us to have to create and create and create and create to see success. And that is only as scalable as the number of posts that you can create every day. And it's not to say that social media isn't important. It's not to say throw social media away. Yes, continue to do what you're doing. But when you're thinking about scale, meaning when we're, when we're talking about scaling, we're talking about making incremental improvements that add up and, let, and th- that exponentially increase your business, right? These are things that you put, these are um, mechanisms and systems and strategies that you put in place that are designed to take what you're doing and, and, and compound on top of that. And so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about scale. And so organic social, again, it's important, but it's only as scalable as the amount of posts that you can put out as the amount of as as the amount of traffic that the algorithm is going to send you and so as you grow you're going to need more leads to sustain and surpass your current level and so instead of focusing on creating more social media content say like instead of saying like oh well i'm posting once a day now let me go and post twice a day or i'm already posting two three times a day let me post five times a day instead of saying that i want you to shift your focus to actually investing in and 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 um gathering resources for and and investing your 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 attention into these three long-term lead generation strategies okay so let's start at strategy number one strategy number one is paid advertising so why paid advertising for lead generation i would literally say and i would stand on this stage (laughs) and, and 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 say this to the masses that paid advertising is the best way to expand your reach and to get your evergreen offers in front of new new audiences with minimal effort. So when you're investing in paid ads, you're investing in putting your offers, your lead magnets, your messages on a larger stage. You're investing in showing your offers to people who need what you who who need what you have but aren't directly connected to you. And that's the thing when you're thinking about these, uh, you know, in comparison to like organic social media, for example, or organic efforts, people have to be, you know, connected to you in some kind of way on social media or organic social media for them to see your stuff. And when you're investing in ads, you're investing in saying like, you know what, I want to expand my reach beyond people who are connected to me through the algorithm. 
Hey there, CEO. Are you tired of creating content after content after content only to have it die in the feed after a few days? Do you wish there was a way to make more money without needing to create even more content? Well, there is. Facebook ads. When you invest in Facebook ads, you one, get off that organic hamster wheel of creating endless amounts of content to hit your sales goals. Two, you generate quality leads that are dying for your offers 24 seven. And three, you put your sales on autopilot without all the time and effort of hustling organically. After generating over $150 million with Facebook ads for some of your favorite brands like Zappos, Crocs, Adidas, and hundreds more, I have distilled all of that knowledge into my signature framework called the Zeal Method. If you are ready to stop posting 17 reels a day and learn how to create long-term sustainable success by investing in Facebook ads, I invite you to watch my free workshop, Maximize Your Money, How to Exponentially Increase Your Sales with Facebook Ads. In this workshop, you'll learn the three things you must have in place before investing in Facebook ads for maximum success. You'll learn what it takes to create ads that attract your ideal clients 24 seven, and you'll learn my signature zeal method that my clients use to run ads that generate quality leads on autopilot. Head over to stacyzeal.co slash maximize to watch the workshop and learn how to learn the exact steps to exponentially increase your sales with less effort by investing in Facebook ads. All right, let's jump back into the episode. And the other thing with paid ads is that they are pre- they're predictable. That predictability is a huge piece of scaling. Right. Like when I was working at Zappos and we were always talking about like we were focused on scale, like we were focused on finding things that we would do to be able to add up over time that would then, you know, take our business to the next level. And it had to be predictable. Right. Because when we're, you know, allocating marketing budgets or when we're forecasting for what we're going to do for the year, I have to be able to look at my analytics and say, you know, how much money have I made from 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 these efforts from this particular channel? How much money have I paid made from ads? How much money am I projected to make? So that way I can start to really budget for these kinds of things. Paid advertising is predictable. You can estimate the costs and the amounts of leads you're going to get for that cost. So when you're ready to scale, you know how much you need to get to your next milestone. So for example, if you know that when you're running Facebook ads, you can get 100 extra leads for 50 cents a lead. That's predictable. Yes, are we trying to lower that cost per lead? Absolutely, we're always trying to lower that cost per lead. But we can estimate that if we've done some testing and we can see that we spend, that our average cost per lead is 50 cents. And so if we spend $100, we're going to get 50 leads. If we need to get 100, we need to, you know, we need to spend, you know, we need to spend 50 bucks, right? Like, so these kinds of things are important as you're scaling. You have to be able to predict where your leads are coming from and where your sales are coming from. Organic social is not super predictable. Yes, you could go viral one day, right? I've had I've had clients or I've had, you know, um, dealings with other companies who've gone viral, right? You go viral. It's like, oh my gosh, my sales shoot up. Boom. This is great. But then what happens after two days that virality dies down because something else has gone viral. And so the amount of money that you made is not repeatable. It's not, it's not repeatable enough to a sense that it's predictable. Can you go viral again? Yeah, but you, there is no equation that you can put together to say this kind of video is going to go viral. No matter what anybody tells you. Right. Okay. And so you have to start to infuse ways of of, um, predictability into your marketing as you get to when you're at this stage and paid ads are predictable. And so let's talk about, you know, because you can you can run ads on so many different platforms. You could do Facebook. You can do Google ads. You can do TikTok ads. You can, um, you know, just do commercials. You can run ads on Hulu. There's a lot of different ways that you can run ads. So I'm going to talk about the differences in the top three that that online business owners typically invest in. And so I'm going to talk about differences like with Facebook versus Google versus TikTok ads. And so when I was working at throughout my whole career, I've dabbled in paid advertising. But when I was at Zappos, that's when I was immersed into paid social advertising. So I've run ads on Facebook, Instagram, obviously, TikTok for sure, Pinterest, um, Snapchat, YouTube, Twitter, I've run ads on a lot of the different social platforms. And then also I've run ads on Google, not at Zappos, but I did dabble in Google ads before. And so when I think about 
all the options that you have out here, here are the really kind of the things that I want you to keep in mind if you're debating between where to invest your money, where to, where to invest your, your paid advertising dollars. So let's start with Google ads. Google ads are dependent on someone being problem aware enough to be searching for your topics. Because that's the thing with Google ads. Google ads, you it requires a search first, right? Or it requires someone going to a blog about a specific topic first. And so what does that mean? That means that that person has to be problem aware enough for them to actually be actively looking for the solution. And so this is great for people who are problem aware. This is great for people who are problem aware enough to be actively searching for that solution, right? Emphasis on they are actively searching for that solution. Think about all the things in your life that you are aware that you that, that may be a problem that you want to solve. It's, oh, I, you know, maybe you want to, you know, maybe you want to get in, get, be, get in better shape. Maybe you want to start meditating. Maybe you want to work on your mindset. Maybe you want to work on your sales activities. Maybe you want to, um, you know, work, learn about franchising and investing in other businesses. Maybe you want to learn. All, there, there are so many things in your life that you're like, ooh, these are all kind of things that are popping up that I kind of want to solve. But our attention is limited <laughs> and we focus on what we focus on. Right. So just so so someone has to be actively searching for what you are looking, what you're selling in order for you to show up with Google ads. Also, it is very hard to compete with Google ads because you need a big budget. You need a bigger budget, I would say, to be out to be able to win because Google is, you know, Budgeting matters a lot there. So what you're bidding for, like what you're, you, the cost per click that you're bidding for, all of that kind of stuff really, really matters. And if you have a company, for example, that let's say you have a sales academy and, you know, or memberships about, you know, teaching people how to sell, you might get outbid by all these other humongous sales academies that have you know, t 10 times the budget that you have with it, when you're thinking about Google. Is it to say Google ads don't work? No, I'm not saying that at all. I just want to make sure that you see both sides of the coin. Is that yes, the great thing is ab about Google ads is that people are, they have a higher purchase intent, meaning that they are actively searching for the solution and they are more likely to actually go ahead and, you know, um, invest in that solution or not invest in it. Go ahead. They're more likely to, to, to continue to seek information about that solution, right? But the problem is, though, is that you also need a you need a bigger budget. You need to beat out the next person who's competing against you in order for your to, to, to make any, you know, kind of stake there. So if you're in a crowded industry and you don't have a super large budget, Google Ads might not be the place for you. So let's talk about TikTok. TikTok. TikTok's algorithm is designed to keep users on the platform by showing them new content. That is the major, if you think about all of the, how all of the social networks work in a sense of how they approach keeping people on their platform, because that is how they get paid, AKA with ad dollars. They want people on their platform. So they design their algorithms in a way to keep people on the platform so that they see more ads and then they make more money on a fundamental level, right? <laughs> Basic, very fundamental, you know, uh, um, uh, level right there. But the difference though, with TikTok is that TikTok is like, you know what? We think that in order to keep people on our platform longer, we need to show them new content. We don't need to keep showing them the same content that they've engaged with before. We need to keep showing them new, 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 new. And to an extent that's working, right? TikTok is growing really fast. It's got, gotten a lot of, you know, captured a lot of Gen Z. So it's, it's, there's something to it, right? But the thing though, is it's hard to keep up with. So if you are someone who is not posting TikToks every day, not creating new content every day, not investing in, um, you know, the trends that they have popping off, all of that, this may not be the platform for you. And even I would say with ads, because we're talking about advertising here, that's the fundamentally how the organic platform works. When we think about ads, with ads, with social ads, you have to play into the platform. Like it has to look like it matches the platform. Like you can't take a, t a commercial from Hulu, like a TV commercial, you know, that you would see on Hulu, that you would see on Xfinity, that you would just see on cable and put that on TikTok 
on any, any social ad, ad platform, I would say, other than maybe YouTube, you can't just take it from Hulu and put it on TikTok or Facebook and expect it to work because you have to adapt your advertising to the platform that you are on. Commercials are meant to be consumed in a completely different way than social ads are meant to be consumed or that social content is meant to be consumed. And so with TikTok, you have to play into the trends. When I was running ads at Zappos for TikTok, what influencer content was the top content. So if you're not using influencers who are who know how to create trendy con- trendy content that actually blends in and 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 fits authentically within the algorithm, then this may not be the platform for you. If you're not someone who is able to see a trend that is building before it actually pops off because that's the thing with TikTok is like you have to get that trend as it's building if you want to see it get get um get some visibility. Not after the trend has already, you know, become super popular and oversaturated. So if you're not someone who is picking up on those trends early, then this may but this may not be the platform for you. And advertising, I would say same thing. You have to play into the trends. You have to play into what's look what's looking good on that platform. It has to look like it belongs on TikTok. Of any other platform, TikTok is the main platform that it has to look like it belongs on TikTok. Okay, so keep that in mind. So so that's TikTok. So let's talk about Facebook. And when I say Facebook, I also mean Instagram because with Facebook's platform, because Meta owns Facebook and Instagram, um, you can run ads from the same campaign on, they will run on Facebook and on Instagram at the same time. Um, Same budget pool. You just set up one campaign and it'll run between both platforms. And that's one of the good things about Facebook's platform is that you do get two channels in one. So you get to, Facebook will show your ads to on, you know, on the platform that it thinks is going to convert on. So if I am someone who converts more on Instagram, it's going to show it to me on Instagram. If I'm someone who converts more on Facebook, it's going to show it to me on Facebook. So that's one of the great things about Facebook ads. But here's Facebook and Instagram's algorithm is the complete opposite of TikTok. Facebook and Instagram's algorithm is designed to show you content from people who you know or you have interacted with. So their whole approach is... Hey, I'm going to keep you on the platform longer if I show you content from people who you like, people who you know, people who you've interacted with, the influencers that you follow based on the topics that you say that you're interested in. And there's something to that too, right? Because Facebook is like third visited site website in the world. Okay. So the, Facebook has 2.8 billion monthly active users. Instagram has 1.9 billion monthly active users. That means 1.9 billion people log into Instagram once, at least once every 30 days. So there's something to that, right? There's something to TikTok's algorithm. There's something to it. And they're both kind of, you know, Facebook is kind of taken from Insta- from TikTok and they're like, ooh, let's try to show people more new content, you know, because it's working on TikTok to test that out. But fundamentally, Facebook's whole thing is that they're going to show you content that you've interacted with. And so what that happens, the problem with that is that the same people are seeing the same shit, seeing all your stuff. So the post up that you're posting on your professional Facebook page, the same people are seeing those posts every day. Are you, when you're posting reels, will you get new people? Yes. That's the point of reels is to really kind of dive in and be able to reach new people. But for the most part, is that predictable? Is that scalable? Because that's what we're talking about in this series. We're not talking about just doing stuff. <laughs> we're talking about doing things that actually scale, that are predictable, that are repeatable. And so just posting a bunch of reels and hoping that they go viral, hoping that they bring new people, you know, a certain amount of new people into your world every day is not predictable. No matter how good your reels are, you may have one reel that pop off today, but then you won't, you post six reels and none, and and they get barely any traction. So that's the name of the game. But the reason that advertising is amazing is because you can just say, Hey, F that. I want you to show my ads to everybody that I've told you to target. I want you to show it to people who are outside of my algorithm, who are out, who are not connected to me by a friend of a friend of a friend. Then you start to widen your reach. You start to understand that there is such a much larger world out there on Facebook. You start to realize that the posts that you've been posting organically, you haven't even scratched the surface of what you can do on Facebook and Instagram if you have not started advertising yet. If you're seeing success on these platforms and you haven't started advertising yet, oh my goodness, you have barely scratched the surface. 
because advertising, Facebook and Instagram ads allow you to reach people who are outside of your immediate sphere. People who are not connected to you by a friend of a friend of a friend. Facebook's ad platform is also the most flexible in terms of targeting, budget, and creative options. And so if I think about it in comparison to Google, you don't need Facebook's a bigger, a better message is going to beat a bigger budget on Facebook and Instagram. On Google, a bigger budget is going to beat you every time. It's about figuring out how do I spend, you know, how do I make my budgets competitive? On Facebook, it's about how do I, how do I take my messaging and infuse it into an ad that connects with people? And reaches people and pulls them into my world. My If my message is better than that big brand, even if they have a bigger budget, they may reach a lot more people. But are they connecting with those people? Are they getting those people to say, you know what, I'm going to leave Facebook and go jump and look at your landing page. I'm going to leave Facebook and go look at your webinar. Right? So a message on Facebook beats a bigger budget every time. And perhaps one of the most important distinctions is that with Facebook and Instagram ads, you are able to get in front of people who are problem aware, but are not actively searching for your solution. And so think of, I'm gonna give you an example. I have been wanting to get another round of laser hair removal. Um, and I've been busy. I have a, a lot, a thousand other things that are on my mind that I need to take care of, a thousand other problems that, I, that are more you know, higher priority. And so it's not something that I'm searching Google for. I'm not there at a, at a place where I'm like, oh, let me search for Google and get on here. I'm not thinking about it all the time, but it's definitely a, a desire that I've had or a, a problem that I that I want to fix. And so I saw an ad on, Inst I mean, on, yeah, on, it was on Facebook. I saw the ad on Facebook for Laser Away. And they, it popped up in my feed. I was just scrolling Facebook, you know. It popped up. It caught my attention because I was like, ooh, that's something that I've been thinking about. But it's not at the top of my brain. It's something that I've been thinking about, been wanting to do, but it's not top of mind. And so I saw the ad. They were able to get their message in front of me on a medium where I was just, you know, scrolling. They got my information. I filled out the form, got the prices that I want. They called me. They did all. They put me into their sales sequence. And so that's the thing with Facebook and Instagram ads is that this person may not be actively searching for that solution, but if you have a message that connects with them, that brings them uh, that that brings that problem that they haven't been thinking about to the forefront without them having to actually be searching for it, but they people send signals, we all send signals that there are things that we're interested in. You know, Facebook is always kind of tracking what we're doing and seeing what we're interested in. So yeah, there's some, you know, th there's that. But at the same but at the end of the day, I didn't have to go searching for prices for laser hair removal and see all of the thousands of ads that are going to pop up for all the different competitors, all the different articles. Like I didn't have to go through all that laser away. Just put, the, put that message in front of me. They invested in ads to put that message in front of me. That is the difference. That is the power of Facebook and Instagram ads versus some of these other platforms. And so bottom line with this, paid advertising world, because we talked about a couple of the different um, platforms. Facebook's ad platform gives you the most flexibility and you get two channels in one. And I want you to understand that advertising, that ads are a long-term scalable strategy. And it's a way to get you in front of completely new audiences, whether they're searching for your solution or not. And so if you have a big budget and you want to compete with some of these other very, very large brands that have very, very large budgets, then maybe you want to explore some of the other platforms. But you can compete with a big budget on Facebook, unlike with Google Ads. You can compete, you can compete against a big budget, I should say, because a better message beats a bigger budget every time. And so if you are thinking, you want to learn more about Facebook ads, because you've been thinking about, oh, maybe I should do Google. Maybe I should do TikTok. Maybe I, what should I do? And if I've let you, I've, I've, I've started to ignite your fire for Facebook and Instagram ads, then I definitely want you to go watch my workshop. Because in that workshop, I go in deep about how Facebook ads actually work. I talk about how to layer them into your existing ad strategy. I mean, to your existing marketing strategy so that you can take what you're doing to the next level. So head over to stacyzeal.co slash max, M-A-X. 
and you'll be able to watch the workshop. You can also go to the show notes and it's going to be in the workshop will be linked in there. So that's paid advertising. That's strategy number one is this law of, of thinking about long term lucrative ways to make um, to to generate leads at scale. Paid advertising is one of, is, is, pro, is one of the best tools that you can use. Let's talk about strategy number two. Strategy number two is OPP. <laughs> I could not wait to say that. OPP, a.k.a. other people's audiences. Um, If other people's audiences is a way for you to, one, get yourself in front of new people, but also there is an inherent trust that is built in when someone who has built an audience is able to say, hey, you know what? This, you know, Ashley is an expert salesperson. And I definitely want you, and you know, she's going to come and present to my community. She's going to talk on my podcast. And there's all, there's an, there's that inherent trust built in when you have someone who has built the trust of their audience and then they're bringing you and putting you in front of their audience. And so we know it's hard to build an engaged audience and getting volume, honestly, is the easy part. Like getting saying like, you know, I just want to build a list of thousands of people is, 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 is not hard, but building a community is what takes time and effort. Building people who are buying into your brand, people who want to who want to actually support you, people who who sing your praises, people who tell people about you. That is what's hard. And so if you can get in front of someone who's already who has an audience where they've already done that, that is something that will literally take your lead generation to the next level because you get in front of people who have these large audiences who have this trust built in and you end up being able to do one guest podcast and getting, you know, hundreds of leads. You're able to do one guest blog post and it just keeps sending traffic to your site for years. You're able to, you know, so you're able to do like, you know, summits and all those kinds of things and able to have that content be able to send you leads consistently long term. And so that's, again, why this fits under here. So I want to give you a couple ways um, to get in front of other people's audiences or other people's property, Um, because I do a ton of getting in front of other people's audiences. This is something that I love to do. I love to build building relationships is one of my strengths. Um, if you never take a Clifton strengths test, definitely take a strengths test. And that's, I mean, I literally have taken a strengths test and that building relationships is one of my, one of my strengths. Um, and so, um, I love to get in front of other people's audiences. So here's a couple of things that you can, um, to do. Um, so guest podcasting or guest blogging. And I have a couple stats here that, um, that I thought was interesting is that 81% of podcast listeners trust the recommendations of podcast hosts from, um, that's according to Nielsen. I literally cannot tell you how many books, <laughs> how many lead magnets, <laughs> and how many products I've bought or downloaded or signed up for from someone being a guest on one of my favorite podcasts. Like, it, this is something that I know works because I do it. <laughs> and I'm, if you think about it, I'm sure you do too. I have literally bought so many amazing books. Like, I'll listen to an interview with someone and... It's just a, such a captivating conversation. And then I'm like, I got to buy the book because I need to learn. I want to learn the whole system. I want to learn more. I want to learn more about the framework or I want to follow them on Instagram or I want to get into, um, you know, download their lead magnet or watch their workshop to learn more about this topic. Right. So it happens all the time. I can't literally like I literally was just listening to Amy Porterfield's um, show last week from when I'm recording this. And she was talking to Pat Flynn about affiliate marketing. And then I signed up for Pat's uh, um, workshop because I'm, you know, taking uh, um, taking a stake in, in affiliate marketing right now and testing that out as part of my strategy. Um, and so I'm like, I literally heard him on a podcast. They talked about affiliate marketing. I'm like, oh, this is great. He's going to show, he has a webinar coming up where he's going to show the step-by-step. Cool, let me sign up. Boom. Like, it happened. It, it, now he's got a new lead. Now I'm on his email li- a, a list and I'm getting his emails again because I was on it before. Unsubscribed. Now I'm back on it, <laughs> right? And so that's how this, that's how podcasting really kind of helps you to reach the masses with minimal effort because you doing one really good podcast interview could send you leads. And especially if you're taking those things and like repurposing it in a sense of like putting it on your blog, posting it as show notes because blog traffic just sends traffic all the time. It's just, it's a forever kind of thing. And so those are, so guest podcasting is great. Speaking at summits, whether it's virtual or in-person or any kind of events, media slash press. Um, HARO is a great re- um, resource for getting press articles. Um, HARO stands for Help a Reporter Out. So you go to help a reporter out, maybe.org, maybe.com. I'm going to... Um, 
do some research and let you know. But either way, it's uh, it, it, help a reporter out. Um, Google that and you'll find it. And so I scored a Business Insider article that led to other guest opportunities from me just responding to a post from Help a Reporter Out and pitching myself for something. Um, Facebook groups, memberships, communities, those kinds of things are all great ways to get in front of other people's audiences. So the key is to just get in front of the right audience so that you make sure you're spending your time in groups with people who are your ideal audience. So don't just take every opportunity like that you get like I did. Like last year, I was doing a lot of, ooh, you want me to speak? Sure. Ooh, you want me to speak? Sure. Ooh, you want me to speak? Sure. But then I had to realize like my time is valuable. And instead of saying I've done, I've done, been on 10 podcast interviews every month, I want to be able to say I've got, I've, I've been on, you know, two or three really, really good, strong, impactful podcasts that drove me a lot of leads instead of saying just like volume, right? So it's not about volume, it's about quality. All right. So that's other people's audiences. Last piece that we're going to talk about, the last strategy that brings you lifelong, long-term lucrative leads um, at scale is content marketing. And we are in a content heavy marketing world right now. And so I have a couple stats here. So 63% of consumers said that they would think more positively more positively of a brand if it gave them content that was valuable, interesting, or relevant, according to News Cred Insights. All right, another stat. Content marketing generates three times as many leads as outbound marketing, but costs 62% less, according to Content Marketing Institute. So content marketing, you know, I know that you're already out there creating content. I know that you understand how important it is. But here's the thing. As you're scaling, as you are getting bigger, you have to start to really put a lot more emphasis and effort into content that has a long shelf life. Short form video is great. Short reels are awesome. All of that kind of stuff is definitely awesome and important. But long term content that has a shelf, a long shelf life, meaning it has a place on the internet. It's going to continue to get search results. It's going to get people, you know, searching for it and come and bring in traffic to it. It's going to continue to nurture your audience. That's what I mean. Content that has a long shelf life, content that lasts, content that consistently brings you traffic and leads to your site um, or into your marketing ecosystem because it's it lives somewhere that is meant to be long term unlike social, as we've been talking about. So here are three different types. So blog posts, people definitely still read blogs. And so if you are thinking about, if you already have a blog, you know, I'm going to give you some other ones, but if you're not blogging, meaning you're not taking the the, the content that you're doing, maybe you're doing long form content, or maybe you're doing some some of these other things, and you're not turning those things into blog posts, um, or putting them on your site to help you to get more SEO traffic, that is something that you're seriously missing out on. Because here are, comp- here are a couple stats about blogging. Over 77% of internet users read blogs regularly, according to Impact. 57% of marketers say they gained customers specifically through blogging, according to HubSpot. Blogs are the fifth most trusted source for accurate online information, according to marketing charts. And um, B2B marketers who use blogs generate 67% more leads than those that do not, according to Demand Metric. So blogs are definitely still a great place for you to create long-term content that's going to be sitting, that's going to be um, around for a while. Another um, content that you need to be thinking about is video. So like, and what I mean by video, I mean long, long form video. I'm not meaning like, you know, the short reels clips. I'm thinking things that are actually like, you know, on YouTube, going live videos that are like 15 minutes, like video that is longer than a couple minutes that actually gives people a good nugget of information that they can take and then take action on. Um, So again, short form video is great for reaching new audiences, but long form video has staying power. And YouTube is owned by Google. So it's fueled by the largest search engine in the world, the number one visited website in the world. And so if you're thinking about like taking the, the videos that you're doing or taking the content that you're doing and turning it into videos, if you're already blogging, turn some of your popular blogs into videos. If you're you know doing video, make some blogs out of your videos. You can transcribe them. You can use a tool called Descript to, to, to transcribe your uh, videos and your audio and turn those things into blog posts. Um, so they, these are long form ways. And then the last way is podcasts. 
And so podcast is like the new kid on the block, even though it's been around the block for a while. Um, but it's really kind of taken off. And so here are some stats on podcasting. So 93% of podcast listeners listen to all or most of each episode. That is a huge, huge amount of people who are listening to all of your content. Unlike, think about YouTube videos. Do I finish YouTube videos? Yes. But a lot of times when I'm getting on YouTube, I'm finding a video, getting the information that I need, and I'm moving on. I may not be finishing that video. But 93% of podcast listeners listen to the entire episode, meaning they're starting from the beginning where, where they can hear your introduction, your ads. They're starting, they're listening to the middle where they can hear ads. And they're listening to the end where they can hear the, where they can hear ads or promotions for the things that you're doing. 60% of podcast listeners have purchased something based on a podcast ad, according to Edison Research, which I've told y'all I have, I've. I'm in that 60% because I have purchased things. I've literally gotten on Amazon as I'm listening to a podcast and order people's books. Like it's, it's, it's insane. Um, the average purchase value of podcast listeners is 14% higher than compared to non-listeners according to mid roll. So if you're using your podcast to nurture your existing audience, it's a great thing. That's what mainly what I use my podcast for is to nurture existing, my existing audience until they're ready to buy from me. Um, but I've recently been starting to figure out how to use it as a lead generation tool. Um, so stay tuned <laughs> for more on that. I also have a podcast expert that's going to come on the podcast and talk about podcasting. So definitely make sure you're following the show if you want to learn more about that. But, you know, podcasting is such a great long term type of content and you can repurpose it so often into so many things. All of these things you can repurpose. Um, content marketing is fueled by search engine optimization, which is SEO. And SEO is essentially about creating content that's optimized to help search engines like Google and like Bing actually show your content to people who are searching for it. That's really how to basically understand SEO. And content marketing is rooted in attraction and inbound marketing, meaning you create content and pull people into your world. But the problem with content marketing is that we always feel like we're on an endless loop of creating more and more and more and more content. So... Creating content that has a long shelf life and is fueled by SEO will generate leads for you forever, unlike social content that dies in the feed after a couple days. And so in next week's episode, I'm going to give you some tips and tools and tactics for enhancing your content creation process. I'm going to give you a behind the scenes of how I create all the content that I create so that you don't feel like you're on an endless hamster wheel of creating content. So let's recap what we talked about. So the three lucrative long-term lead generation strategies that you need to be focused on when you are scaling your business is paid advertising, specifically Facebook ads are my uh, top recommendation, uh, OPP, aka other people's audiences, and content marketing. So making sure that you're creating content that's long-term and that's going to continue to drive you leaps forever. And so in order to be success, in order to successfully scale your evergreen offers for the long term, you need to shift your focus to prioritizing these lucrative, scalable strategies. If organic social media is your top lead generator, it's time to invest in ads so that you don't have to work as hard for the leads that you're getting. So if you t I want you to take one thing from this list, <laughs> take one thing from this list and figure out how to do it better or figure if you're already doing it, figure out how to do it better. So if you're already on, you know, running, you're already posting on social organically, figure out how to do ads. If you are already creating YouTube videos, think about investing in YouTube ads. Or if you're already, you know, getting in front of other people's audiences, figuring out how you can create affiliate programs with those people um, or affiliate partnerships with those people and take those relationships even deeper so that you can consistently drive leads from them. And if Facebook and Instagram ads are on your priority list and you're ready to learn what three things you need to have in place before investing in ads for long-term success, definitely go watch my workshop. My workshop is at stacyzeal.co slash maximize. And so I want to make sure that you have subscribed to the show so that you don't any, miss any episodes from the Streamline and Scale series. Again, the first episode has already aired, so go back and listen to that. Next week's episode, we're going to be talking about how to enhance your content creation process. And so I'm going to be giving you a behind the scenes of how you can create more content at scale without it having to take up all your time. Because again, this is about streamlining and scaling. So yes, we are scaling, but we also make sure that we are streamlining our content creation process so that you're not just endlessly on this hamster wheel of content after content after content after content. All right, y'all, that's what I got for y'all today. I will see y'all on the next episode. Make sure you're following the show and share it with a friend. I'll talk to y'all next week. OMG, that episode was packed with gems. Are you ready for more? 
head over to stacyzeal.co slash podcast to get the show notes and to sign up to get our top five podcast episodes to help you streamline your marketing so you can make this your million dollar year. Head over to stacyzeal.co slash podcast.